Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Hey, I got another toolbox here. I think this is one of the ones that they call an anarchist uh, tool chest. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of get into this. Now, the first thing you're going to see, it's got this uh, canvas cover on here. And this thing is loaded. A friend of mine uh, gave me this for the purpose of shooting this video. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what this gentleman did who owned this box uh, based on the content of it. I'm guessing this is from the 50s, 60s, maybe 70s time frame, but there's a whole wide range of tools in here, and I think it's uh, very interesting based on some of the things that are in here. So let's uh, let's start taking a look. So the first thing we see are a couple of saws, and this is a, an old Diston. These are both cross-cut saws, and the usual place where guys store these things. Painted, let's see, this is a this is another Distin. It's a D8 from Philadelphia. Uh, Henry Distin, and looks like uh, the guy painted it black. And either the gentleman's name was Gus or his initials were GUS. Not sure uh, which one of that is. But nice thing. By the way, I didn't do, I didn't do anything to this box other than put this uh, rope. I put this rope on here just to be able to uh, keep it in an up position. So uh, let's get into this. So the first thing, or the second thing I should say, is there's a couple door kits in here. And these look like they're, uh, it looks like they're copper. So maybe the guy was a home handyman, a uh, general carpenter, not sure. Okay, so. One of the things I really liked about this box, and this reminded me of my dad. He had some key wallets in here. And uh, I, I actually used to use these when I was a teenager. And uh, a couple keys here. And so this was a kind of fond memory of my, of my childhood. Uh, this? Oh. Yeah, here's the thing I really liked about it. The guy had a diary in here his name's not in here but he did have in here minor repairs and it looked like uh he was just doing like on a serial number basis to do this and then the different job names uh, but there's no there's no date and the guy's handwriting is actually lovely uh really cool uh like I said, I, I, I didn't find any dates or prices or anything like that, but I do, uh, I think it's pretty cool. All right, so one thing, this little bag is, it's a different, it's a whole bunch of different center punches and there's some offset screwdrivers so he had to get into some tight spaces uh, there's a little wrench of some sort so this will certainly come in handy if you're a home handyman there are a couple of expansion bits in here these are the russell jennings this is a, uh the russell Jen jennings expansive bit doesn't look like it was ever used and uh, you know, if you guys are into old tools, really like these things, I do too. Again, I don't think this one was ever used. There's no sawdust on it. There's this one piece. Okay, there is a bunch of dr twist drills in here. And some of them, they're, they're extra long and they're very sharp. I mean, these things are real sharp. <clears throat> so give these edges here really nice uh, I'm going to keep these and then we have a box of smaller twist drills and again going back to my childhood the old Sucrets, Sucrets box and a bunch of smaller bits so a nice little treasure chest of 
We even got a countersink for the uh, the auger, for the brace, and uh, we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Here's the man's lock. I guess this is for the box. One of those keys that I saw earlier it might be for that. Here's an old uh, scout knife. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys were in the scouts and can appreciate this. This looks like it's in pretty good shape. And what's in here? Oh, a little stitching machine for leather work. And we got some chalk lines. This looks like an expansion bit. Not too interesting. Let's see. We have a small compass. And we got a screwdriver a bit for the auger uh, brace. And no toolbox is complete without your sharpening stone. And this, uh, this doesn't look like it was used very much. This is a uh, very flat. But every carpenter and every guy woodworking needs to have a nice sharp set of tools. Probably one of the most important things you need. Oh, and if you've got sharp tools, you don't know how to use them. You even got some uh, bandages in here. Boy, this is all, that box is all, oh, looks like he didn't cut himself. This is not, this has not been uh, opened up. Here's the uh, Interstate Equipment Company from Elizabeth, New Jersey, not too far from me. This is only about an hour away. Uh, interstate Equipment, Construction Equipment. And we got some miscellaneous things. We've got a glass cutter, another compass, a little tiny screwdriver, and a little wrench. So this guy did all types of things. They got a little spring punch. I love these things. And we have some uh, pencils here. Let's get, let's get this out of here. So for those of you who don't have a lot of patience, here's what we're going to get into next. I got a nice wide variety of tools in here. And again, some really interesting things. So please stay tuned. And by the way, have you uh, subscribed to my channel yet? I've got several toolbox opening videos so far. And uh, this is another one and they seem to be pretty popular with you folks. So, you know, hey, give me a, a like and a thumbs up and, uh, you know, please subscribe. All right, so let's get into this. We have a chisel. It actually looks like a, well, oh, maybe not a homemade chisel. Oh, very sharp. I knew how to sharpen. Here's a gouge, broken handle. Probably beat on this a little bit too much. It's missing the uh, top. An old style lug wrench. I guess that made it, might have been for a specific purpose, maybe a bicycle or a hit or miss engine, who knows. It looks like common sizes. That looks about three quarter. This looks like about nine sixteenths. This is just a divider piece. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Those. I think these were, these might have been old Stanleys. Right, I kind of remember seeing these ones with this uh, reddish maroon color. And these are all straight, regular bits. Uh, let's see, we have another, another chisel. This is a quarter inch chisel. Well used, but uh, still got a lot of life left to it. Very cool. All right, this is one of the most interesting things in here. So this is like a three quarter inch twist drill, but it's got an auger bit uh, ending on it. So how the heck are you going to drive that thing fast enough with your with your brace? I mean, I don't think you're going to get through metal with this thing. Maybe the guy used it for for wood, but you know, I've never really seen a, a twist twist drill with an uh, you know auger uh, driving end on it. Oh, let's see. Got a little plastic mallet. I guess you could use for a adjusting your wooden hand planes or just a little persuasion left or right. And we got a pair of uh, outside calipers. 
you got a file card for cleaning your files. All right, this is one of the things I really like in this box. This is a handmade uh, plane for uh, dados or rabbits. So the guy apparently had made this himself. And uh, yeah, it's kind of sharp. It's got a big old flathead screw in here for for holding the uh, cutter in. So I think that's a nice little piece of Americana right there. Oh, let's see. oh yeah. Here is a, gla a glass cutter for circles. It's a circle cutting glass cutting bit. So again, this kind of makes me think that he was like a jack of all trades, home carpenter, whatever you need. Maybe this was goes into the for a, a window for the door kicks that he had, in case he had a round round part. So there's the uh, glass cutter bit. We got a marking gauge, and this marking gauge is cool because it expands. Right, and it's got one one point on this side and another point on that side. And uh, so it's adjustable, so I think that's pretty cool. And it's got some measurements here. I don't really see any manufacturer's name on it, but cool nonetheless. Here's something that I really liked about this box. The, uh, there's a whole bunch of files in here. And it looks like what he did, he reused some uh, handles from a, a uh, pure Chinese bristle brush so that he wouldn't stab himself in the palm when using his files. But there's a whole pile of files in here. So I think what happened is this is a whole bunch of triangular files. So I think he sharpened his saws on a regular basis. There's about a half a dozen triangular files here. Another marking gauge. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe it was a uh, furniture maker too. Don't know. And pretty cool. Got a nice little brass plumb bob. So that's not a furniture maker's tool. That's a carpenter's tool. And uh, yeah, that's going to look real nice shined up. But some people might just like the patina that's on there. Right. Yeah half a handful of all the different files in here. These are mainly flat, some uh, more triangular ones. There's a, another little one for uh, saw sharpening. And he's got a nice old big old uh, chisel. I think this is for masonry type work. And it's got a mushroom den, so this looks like it was uh, well used. Uh, this is a cute little hammer. Look at this little tack hammer. Isn't that cool? So, so I'm trying to think if there's a big hammer in here. There might be, I forget. And so that's a cute little thing. There's also a linoleum knife, again, which makes me think he was a general purpose handyman carpenter. And there's a sliding tea bevel in here, but it's missing the, the uh, screw device on here. So um, this reminds me of something. This is a Stanley number HI225. And I think this is probably from the 60s or 70s. Now this, this sliding drawer in here is locked in. You really can't open that up. And by the way, this thing is really heavy. When I picked this thing up, I could barely pick it up. Uh, again, my, my buddy gave me this so that I could do this video with it. And uh, I had some trouble getting it into the truck, to be honest with you. Here is a nice tool roll. Yeah, Russell Jennings. This is a 16 Russell Jennings. And these do not look like they had a lot of use. Uh, this is still very sharp. There's no rust on it. And, uh, you know, for guys that still like hand tool woodworking, this is going to be a really nice set for somebody. I really don't use this type of things anymore. I'm more of a power tool guy. 
And uh, if I'm going to do something this big, I'm probably going to use either a spade bit or a um, Forstner bit. This is one of the things I think is the, one of the most interesting pieces in here. This is a giant pair of dividers. And you can open this up. And then you can do micro adjustments with this screw, right? But how many home handyman need something that's big? So that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I've been doing woodworking for a lot of years, and uh, really never. And I'm a wood turner too, and I'll use dividers, but I never really needed anything that was going to exp expand out that that big. So who knows? Maybe it was a shipbuilder. I don't know. So, for you guys that like hand tool planes, there are two planes in here. Uh, this one looks like a number three. And I think this was modified by the original owner or one of the owners. Uh, looks like he he made his own his own tote right here. And certainly this knob, that knob is not, not factory done. Get the, uh, the lever cap off. Don't see a name on this. If any of you guys recognize this, uh, let me know. This is going to be a subject of a upcoming uh, restoration video I'm going to do. This one, the... The blades in here, I'm not sure exactly where the blade is now, I'm going to get to that. Now here's an old Dunlop uh, sanding block. Look how old that thing is, made of thin sheet metal. And this is part of a back saw, and it looks like he cut it for some reason here. And the only reason I could think of doing something like that is maybe he was using it as a spreader to put mastic down. There's no signs of mastic on here, but... I don't understand why he would want to cut a back saw unless it was way too big and, and maybe he didn't have enough throw in the back of his, of his uh, wooden miter box or metal miter box. He had another line in here. Maybe he was contemplating uh, cutting this again. Maybe that first cut uh, did the trick for him. All right. So uh, check this out. This is a good old pipe wrench, and it's it's got some tarnish and some patina to it. It's still, it's still functional. It says drop forge over here, and again, maybe he uh, he was a handyman, home handyman, doing all different types of things. This is from the Trimont Manufacturing Company of Roxbury, Massachusetts. Maybe old plumbers know the history on this. I certainly don't, don't know the historical significance of this, but you know, certainly a, a good functional tool. I'm sure some uh, plumber uh, who might like this, especially somebody who likes old tools for their collection and or it's still usable because these jaws are still relatively sharp. I think they would get a nice bite on them. Okay, so here's the brace. And this thing is very much tarnished. Tons of patina. This should be cleaned up. And again, there's that big auger. Imagine trying to drive this with this fast enough to cut into metal. I don't think so, Tim. I don't think it's gonna work. Maybe get through some wood with that, but uh, you know, to drive this with this and give me a battery powered tool any day. All right, now this has been one of the coolest things in here. Take a look at this. Maybe it was a wristwatch repairman. <laughs> look at the size of this bad boy. This is probably about 28, 29 inches long. I've never seen a screwdriver this big unless you were working maybe for the railroad or some big industrial equipment. But that's a pretty cool, that is a pretty cool old tool. I love this thing. This is gonna uh, stay in the collection. It's got a little crack on the handle here, but uh, very cool nonetheless. Now this is a piece of stainless steel with a point on it. Now why would a carpenter 
need something like this uh, some kind of spike or I don't know that's that's a serious piece of metal it's a three three quarter inch piece of stainless steel so wasn't a lightning rod I got another sharpening stone that is is a little bit worn okay another pipe wrench this is the Walworth company made in the USA Yeah, nice little piece of American history, 14 inch. And good old Yankee bits. Yeah, first time I use this. Hey, <laughs> came in handy. Let's see if the bits are in here. Well, a bit just the uh, the screw mechanism or the spring mechanism. So I don't know if anybody's still using these types of things anymore with the advent of portable battery powered drills. I think these are pretty much gone by the wayside, but it's a really cool collectible item. Uh, let's see the name on here. Wait a second. Yankee driver, North Brothers, Philadelphia. Now check this out. Now maybe the guy was an electrician or helped electricians, because uh, these are some pretty serious bits. Could you imagine using this with your brace and going all the way through a piece of wood with this? Again, this thing is uh, still sharp, nice long bits, very cool. This looks like about three eighths and Maybe a uh, five ace on this one. Here's the, here's another twist drill for the uh, brace, right? So I'm not sure what you would use that for, or what application that would be in. Here is the, the uh, chip breaker and the blade for this, for this plane. This one does say, uh, this is a Stanley number four. I guess these are both Stanley number fours. Uh, and then we got a little crowbar, and I think this might have been used for, for removing uh, cotter pins or maybe something out, out between your teeth. Who knows? And a couple old classic uh, screwdrivers. This one matches this, so it looks like I had about a total of about eight, eight regular screwdrivers. I don't see any Phillips screwdrivers in here. So, hey, that's about it. What am I hey, one, one more thing. I forgot to show you the most interesting thing in here. This is a tool that I had never seen before. And uh, take a look at this thing. This is, from what I understand, a punch set for corks and gasketing material. And this is marked from one all the way up to number 14. And uh, since I do veneering, I got to test to see if this is, uh, will also work on veneering if you got to cut small circles. But I, I love this. This is just such a cool piece of American history. My guess is this is probably between the 1920s and the 1940s. And I don't know the value of this, but it's certainly an interesting looking tool. So, hey, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, this was a nice little exploration of this uh, toolbox. I suspect this gentleman was a home handyman based on the different variety of kit that he had in here. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I did. I, I, this was a lot of fun. Again, my, a buddy of mine gave me this in order to do this uh, video. He had seen the uh, last one and said, oh, I got to. I got a box that you could use this on. So yeah, I hope you like that. I hope you like this type of uh, video. Uh, they seem to be pretty popular. And uh, hey, till next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Hey, don't forget, subscribe and hit, at least give me a, a like if you think I deserve it. So uh, thanks a lot and see you on the next one.